Hey everyone, we're going to be talking about area between curves in this video, specifically relating to calculus and using integrals. Uh, usually when you see these types of problems, they will ask you to find the bounded area. You'll notice I have uh, two functions here. I'm going to call this one top one curvy here f of x, and I'll call this one that's swooping down here below it, I'm going to call this g of x. Usually when they want you to find the area, there are lots of regions in this picture. There's some stuff down here, uh, there's some stuff in here, there's some stuff over here, there's even some stuff in between over here. The bounded region will be basically the fenced off picture. So everything that is in this zone here, in other words, in this region uh, that I'm kind of shading little lines in here. So that is the bounded region. It's cut off from all of the stuff. It doesn't go on forever. Uh, we're going to be finding the area between these. When we do that, what we'll need to do is uh, first draw our rectangle vertically through the region if we're starting off. So you can imagine some skinny rectangle. Um, and it's really skinny in the x direction. When you started off with integrals, you might have thought about uh, the width being dx. Uh, we're drawing a rectangle this way, and it is very skinny in the x direction. In calcula, we call that dx, a microscopic amount of x. Um, and so what we'll be doing to figure out the height of this rectangle, again, we're going to sum all of the heights of rectangles between these two, f of x and g of x, we want to figure out the distance between f and g. Um, the easy way to do that is to take the bigger value minus the smaller value if you're trying to find the distance between two values. So because I'm looking here at my rectangle, um, the top value, the top of the rectangle is going to be the bigger y value, function value, and the lower value, the bottom function, is going to be the smaller y value. So we're going to always be doing the top minus the bottom. So to find the distance between the two functions, we'll always be able to do f of x, the top function, minus g of x, the bottom function. Okay, so that's assuming again that f is always the top, and g is always the bottom. Now it's possible they give you some sort of a problem you know, in your class where they've got it switched and g is actually on top and f is actually on the bottom, but for the sake of what we're doing here, we would be doing that. So our area uh, between the curves is going to be the integral, and it's going to be a definite integral. We'll talk about the bounds in a second. So it will always be the integral of f of x minus g of x dx. We're also going to be doing all of the integrals with dx on the end. We'll change that in the next couple of videos. Um, but assuming that you're integrating dx with your uh, rectangle going vertically up and down, integral f of x minus g of x, all of that dx. Our bounds, which we usually say from a to b, um, so basically, this leftmost point here, that's the smallest value of x, or the farthest left value of x, if you want to think of that. So that point is where x equals a, and that is your lower bound for the integral. And way over here on the very right point of our bounded region, that's the farthest right point, and so that, whatever that is, will be our x equal to b, so that will be our upper bound. So when we're finding the bounds, it will be the left most point on the lower bound and the rightmost point on the upper bound, and that will give us the area between the two curves. Let's take a look at some examples. So here we have an example. Uh, we're going to find the area bounded by the graphs y equals x plus 2, y equals x squared. So if you're looking at these equations, you might be able to tell the stuff that I've already drawn here. y equals uh, x plus 2 is a line, uh, and I've shown you that here, and then y equals x squared is parabola. Okay, so basically we're looking at uh, this. I'm going to draw an R in the region here. So we're looking at this space here. So I have this line and this piece of the parabola, and those are giving me this bounded region, and that's the area that I'm trying to find. So what I will do is I'll set up that my area between these two curves is going to equal, just like we said in the last slide, the integral from A to B of f of x minus g of x dx. Okay, so once I know I'm using that, I need to figure out which function is f and which function is g. So if I go back and I look at this, I notice that for my area, if I draw a rectangle vertically through my area, like that, um, I notice that the line is the top of my rectangle. 
and the parabola is the bottom of my rectangle. So this is my bottom here. And so I know which is which. So my top is f of x in this integral. My bottom is g of x here. So I'm going to be integrating the functions with x plus 2 in the front, and we're going to subtract x squared in the back as our g of x integral dx. And now we need to find our bounds. And so what we'll do here is we'll go to these intersection points. So if you look at where they cross over here on the very left is going to be my a, right? So this is going to be my x equals a. And over here on the very right, that's where they cross. That's going to be my b. You might be able to tell just by looking at the graph um, what these are. I think it's pretty obvious here that b is 2. So it looks like b is 2. It looks like a is negative 1. If we're not sure about that and you have any question at all, we don't want to assume, what we might need to do is set these equal to each other and figure them out. Okay, so let's just go ahead and do that real quick and make sure that we have this correct. So I'm going to do it down here in the corner. So if I set x plus 2 equal to x squared, and I do that and I want to solve for x to figure out what the intersection points are. So maybe I get everything on the same side, so I move everything to the right. So I would say 0 equals x squared minus x minus 2. And I'll solve that for x. Uh, you could factor that. It does turn out that the intersection points or the solutions to that are actually negative 1 and 2. So we'll go ahead and move forward with this. Now it's just a matter of integrating. So we'll go ahead here and say the integral of all of this. So we'll say the integral of x is x squared over 2. The integral of just 2 would be 2x. Now this is minus in front here, so this is negative x squared. So the integral here would be negative x cubed over 3. All of these are just power rules that we're doing here. And remember that we have a lower bound of negative 1, and we have an upper bound of 2. So what we'll be doing is we'll be plugging in those bounds. And remember it's always the antiderivative b minus antiderivative a when we learned to do definite integrals, right? So I'll plug in my top bound first. So that will be 2 squared over 2 plus 2 times 2 minus 2 cubed over 3. So that's plugging in 2 minus, now we'll plug in negative 1. So negative 1 squared over 2 plus 2 times negative 1 minus negative 1 cubed over 3. All right, and so then we just need to simplify. So this would be 4 over 2, which is 2. This would be 2 times 2 is 4 minus 2 cubed is 8, so 8 thirds on that one. There's a minus in front, so be careful here. Uh, maybe I'll not distribute and just simplify here first. So negative 1 squared would be a positive 1 over 2. This becomes a minus 2. Negative times negative times negative would be a negative 1 here, but I have a minus in the front, so that's actually going to be plus 1 third. And now distributing my minus, let's go ahead and do that. So we'll say uh, 2 plus 4, I'll go ahead and call this 6 minus 8 thirds minus 1 half plus 2 minus 1 third. Okay, let's go ahead and do some easy combining now. Uh, so 6 plus 2, that's going to give us 8 uh, minus a half, and then here I have negative eight-thirds minus another third would be negative nine-thirds. That makes that not so bad because nine over three, right, is going to be three, isn't it? So we'll have eight minus three, which is five minus a half, also known as four and a half or nine halves. And since it's area, remember that this is going to be units squared for this answer here. Okay, let's do another one. Uh, we're going to find the area of one of the bounded regions between y equals cosine x and y equals sine x. Okay, we say one of the bounded regions. I've got my graph of sine and cosine here. Maybe you know which one is which. Uh, this salmon colored pink one here 
Uh, this one is y equals sine x here. This one that starts at 1 and drops down, this one is cosine x. This is y equals cosine x. Uh, we're finding one of the regions because if you think about these keep, uh, they have a wave-like motion, they keep going on forever, so you're going to get a bunch of bounded regions if you just kept graphing and looking to the left or to the right. So we're just going to look at one of the bounded regions, uh, this one here. Um, where we've got this as the top, it looks like sine x is the top, and cosine x is the bottom here. Okay, so this one's going to be my f of x in the formula, that's on the top, and this one's going to be my g of x, it's on the bottom. So we'll go ahead and say our area is equal to the integral, we'll come back and find a and b, so f of x minus g of x is going to be sine x minus cosine x dx and then a to b. So if I didn't have a lovely picture here that was labeled in my radians, I might need to go find the intersection point. Okay, in other words, I might need to set sine x equal to cosine x and find these. But I think we can just do this by looking at the axis, right? So if I look, this is right above pi over 4. The left bound will be down here, the lower bound. The right bound, which is here, and if I go up that looks like at pi, 5 pi over 4 on the axis, so this bound here, the top upper bound, will be 5 pi over 4. And that's our integral set up to do the area. So we'll go ahead and do our integral now, so our area is going to equal antiderivative of sine x is negative cosine x minus antiderivative of cosine x is sine x. So that is our antiderivative done. Now we'll have to plug in our bounds to our antiderivative that we have here. So we're plugging in 5 pi over 4 first, minus, then we'll plug in 5 pi over 4. So our area is going to equal negative cosine of 5 pi over 4 minus sine of 5 pi over 4 also. And now we'll need to plug in, subtract, remember, f of b minus f of a. We'll plug in our pi over 4 in these. Okay, and so we'll have to figure these out. So let's see. Well, cosine of 5 pi over 4 is negative. They're both a negative, right? And that's a negative root 2 over 2. So negative, negative root 2 over 2 would make this root 2 over 2 here. Minus sine of 5 pi over 4. Sine of 5 pi over 4 is also negative root 2 over 2. And I have a minus in front here again. So that's going to be a plus root 2 over 2 there. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and leave this minus, I guess, for now. We'll just work in here. Uh, cosine of pi over 4, that's in quadrant 1, so that's a positive root 2 over 2, but I have a negative in the front, so negative root 2 over 2. Same thing for sine of pi over 4, it's the same, so we get that with a negative in the front there. And so now think about what we've got here. We've got uh, root 2 over 2 plus root 2 over 2. Well, if we don't feel comfortable simplifying right away, that's 2 root 2 over 2. Um, if we distribute the minus, those both become positive, don't they? So I get another root 2 over 2 positive and another root 2 over 2 positive. So if I have 2 root 2 over 2s plus another one, that's 3 of them, plus another one, that's 4 of them. So that's 4 root 2 over 2s, and we can definitely reduce that, right? 4 over 2 would reduce to 2 root 2, and again that is units squared, unless they give us a particular unit that they want us to be using. Okay, so that's two examples for you to go off of. Uh, quick summary here, when you're integrating to find area between the two curves and we're integrating dx, so if you're not integrating dx, our next couple of videos talk about what to do if you're integrating dy, you can look at that. If you're integrating dx though, it's always going to be the integral of the top function minus the bottom function. Uh, remember a and b are going to be your left most point and your rightmost point in the integral. If you're integrating dx, make sure those are x bounds. When you solve for a and b, those need to be x values that you're putting there. dx means x bounds for a and b. Also, remember that those bounds may not be given to you, or if you're slightly unsure, you may need to set functions equal to each other to find those intersection points and then get the a and the b for your values of x. All right, good luck finding your area between curves.